Hey, thanks for joining me for this video. I thought I would just do a quick uh, tutorial, some of the share some of the things that we've been learning about our wood stove and how to get your wood stove to burn easier, burn hotter, and to burn cleaner. Every stove has a lot of personality, so it takes a little while to learn what each stove likes. And we've had this stove running for about a month and a half now, and we've put probably maybe a quart of wood through it, and this has really helped us to learn what, what makes the stove work the best. Every wood stove has some basic features that you can use to kind of control the fire so that it doesn't get too hot, uh, it doesn't cause flame up the flue too high, things like that. So there's also some other little tricks that aren't maybe as obvious about how to get your wood stove to burn a little better. So I'd like to share those with you. Uh, let's dive right in. So one of the things that we found out about this stove is that it doesn't like to be loaded up full. A lot of stoves are that way, but some like to be loaded up. They burn a lot cleaner and a lot hotter when they've got a good stoke of wood in them. This particular stove does not like that. And it took us a little while to figure it out. At first, we put a lot of wood in there and it would slowly uh, build up heat, build up heat, and we get really hot, and then before you know it, it's back down to just embers or ashes. So what we learned is that we need to put maybe two to three pieces of wood in the fire, maybe every 30 to 45 minutes, something like that. And what that does is it gives it just enough fuel and just enough air that it can burn nice and hot and clean. It does take a little bit of maintenance, but it's a lot better because our chimney, if you remember some of our prior videos, was plugging up often. And I think this was contributing to the problem. It was burning fairly dirty. We thought it was burning fairly clean, but when you stoke the fire too much at once, it's going to plug up and it's going to produce a lot of smoke and uh, soot in your chimney. So if you add, once you get the fire hot, if you just add a couple three pieces of wood, maybe every 30 to 45 minutes or so, based on your needs, uh, you'll find that the stove burns nice and even hot and it burns a lot cleaner. So that's one of our tips. Another one of our tips is to get a firewood box. Uh, most homes are really nice and tidy, especially uh, modern homes. They want to keep them really, really clean. I'm sure you're the same way. When you have wood heat, it's a little bit dirty. And so you might be tempted maybe just to bring wood in as you need it, which is fine. But if it's outside, that means it's probably going to be picking up humidity within the wood, unless you've got really, really seasoned firewood, which if you do, fantastic. You probably don't need to do this. But for us, we had to pick up some wood that had been sitting out. It's a little bit seasoned, but it's still got some water on it and in it. So what we did was we just took this Rubbermaid tote and we split the wood and we stored it in the tote. This gives us about 12 hours worth of wood. And because it's inside, it does help to dry it out. There's actually another tip I'll share with you in just a second that'll help to dry it out even more. But this is a good place to start. If you can bring in maybe half a day or even a day's worth of wood at a time, that will help the wood to dry out to some degree before you try to put it in the stove. That's just gonna make it burn hotter and cleaner. Any amount of moisture in the wood, maybe above 12 to 14 percent, is going to reduce the amount of heat that you get from the wood, and it's also going to make it produce a lot more soot and uh, creosote. So this is one of those suggestions. Get a small wood box. It doesn't have to be complicated. If you want to have fun with it, go to Pinterest. If not, get something super utility. This is a nice durable plastic box. We can abuse it a lot. And we store, like I said, about a half a day or 12 hours worth of wood here. And once it's indoors and it warms up quite a bit, it burns a lot easier. Another tip to go along with bringing wood inside, if you have wood that's particularly damp or maybe you didn't get it fully seasoned before you need to burn it, if once you get the wood stove hot, you can actually use the radiant heat from the stove to dry the wood out before you burn it. This is a little bit messy, especially if your firewood's not super clean, but what you can do is put the wood around the base of the fireplace. And there's a fair amount of radiant heat that comes out the bottom of most fireplaces and will help to dry the wood out a little bit before you need to burn it. So what we do is we just take wood from the box and we lay it just underneath the wood stove here, especially near where the opening for the firewood goes because we're using a barrel stove that's on the end. So we just lay the wood face up. That means the wood side up, not the bark side up. And it helps to dry the wood out before we need to actually burn it. In fact, I like to keep a little bit of kindling just in front of the, uh, the wood stove here. That way it's nice and dry, which means fire, starting a fire is super easy. So if you've got some wood that's a little bit damp or maybe isn't quite seasoned all the way, store it around the base of the fireplace here and let it dry out a little bit before you need to burn it. That way you can actually have a box of wood inside and maybe a few hours worth of wood stored around the wood stove and you should be getting a lot hotter and a lot cleaner burn. 
Another thing that can be super tempting is to try to put large pieces of wood, like this guy, straight into your stove. Some stoves are just fine. In fact, some of the bigger stoves, they do really well with maybe two to three large pieces of wood every few hours. And if your stove is like that, perfect. Our stove doesn't like big pieces of wood. It just doesn't. It can't retain enough heat to get this to ignite well. It'll burn, but it doesn't burn clean. So what we found is that we take pieces like this, or maybe even a little bit larger, and we split them into smaller pieces like this. Yes, it's a lot more work. You know, these are about the size of my wrist. In fact, that's what I gauge my uh, size by, is my wrist. If, it, if it's about that big, I found that if we put maybe three to four pieces in there, about every 30 to 45 minutes, it burns nice, hot, and clean. But if we stick a big piece in there like this, which is really tempting, that way you don't have to stoke it very often, it's gonna burn dirty and you're gonna have all kinds of problems. First of all, it's not gonna put out very much heat and like us, you're probably gonna to have to clean your chimney more often. So, if this is uh, something you're struggling with, try splitting your wood into smaller pieces, if you can. And I know a lot of people have really big firewood and it's not always easy, but give it a try. Stop sticking big pieces in there like this and try smaller pieces and see if you get a nice, hot, clean burn out of it. Another tip is to mix wet and dry wood. Uh, for example, we have some wood that was exposed to some rain and to some snow, so it's a little damp. It's a little seasoned, but it doesn't burn quite as hot. So what we do is during the day, we actually mix it with dry wood, maybe two pieces wet, two pieces dry, and that keeps the stove from cooling down too much. But at night, we burn only dry wood. It burns a lot hotter and a lot cleaner, and it's easier to ignite. So this will help you to get through some of the uh, wetter wood that you have, and I would recommend that you burn that early in the season Season, leaving yourself with as much dry wood as you can. This next tip kind of goes without saying, but it's maybe not so obvious to everybody. You definitely want to tarp your wood piles. You want to try to keep moisture from getting on them and then filtering down through the wood. That's pretty obvious, but maybe what's not quite as obvious is that you don't want to tarp the ends. If you leave the ends exposed, and preferably if you can give them a southern exposure during the winter months, the radiant heat from the sun will actually dry that wood out for you. So we have tarps over the wood, but we're not protecting the ends of the wood much because the radiant heat from the sun is helping us get this wood a little bit more dry before we go ahead and put it in the stove. So go ahead and get a tarp on there, and if you can, put the ends on the south exposure. Another tip would be to carefully arrange your pieces of firewood when you're putting them in the stove. If you stack them too close together, the fire doesn't have room to breathe. It's a combustion process, so it has fuel and it needs oxygen in order to combust. And if you stack the pieces too closely together, say when you load the stove, you're loading them something like this and everything's packed all together, there's no air coming through here so it can't combust. It's kind of like when you wad up newspaper, it doesn't burn very good, but if you kind of fluff it up a little bit, it'll burn nice and hot. It does burn quicker, but that releases a lot more energy. So when you're loading your stove, try doing something like crisscrossing the pieces as you put them in, something like this, so that the fire can actually get up underneath and it can get oxygen and breathe, and that will help to increase the combustion. So instead of uh, loading the stove thick like this, try turning the pieces a little bit and create a little bit of a crisscross pattern, and that will help the fire to burn a little hotter and a little cleaner. And one final tip for you to help get a better burn, when you first light a fire, give it enough oxygen that it can build up some heat. You're probably going to want to burn it pretty hot for a little while until the stove actually builds up quite a bit of heat. That's what makes such complete combustion. When you first start a fire, it's all cold. The wood is cold, the wood stove's cold, the ashes and everything are cold, and it takes a while to build up a little bit of heat. But once everything's nice and hot, you can stick some pretty wet wood in there, relatively speaking. Maybe wood that wouldn't burn that well at first. It'll burn nice. So at first, you might want to burn the stove a little hot and get it a little bit of heat in the stove. Open up your flue, open up the draft, and leave the door cracked, maybe about a finger's width, and that'll give the fire lots of oxygen to breathe. Once it starts to get up some good heat built into the stove and into the wood that's in the stove, you can throttle it back a little bit. But that's a good tip to get a, a fire burning nice and hot and quick. Give it a little extra oxygen through the door. Once it's burning pretty good, you can go ahead and shut the door and then use all your settings to control the fire. So hopefully these tips have helped you. If you're enjoying this and you want to learn more about our off-grid homestead journey and other tips like uh, wood stoves, timber framing, milling your own lumber, please follow us on our blog. It's purelivingforlife.com. We also have a Facebook and a Instagram. We do some micro posts over there, some things that don't make it to the blog. So if you like those, please follow us over there and we'll see you in the next video.